Hey y'all, welcome to the start of my Black Author Readathon vlog. So I finished Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend by Lucy Eden and loved it so much. I gave that book five stars. Um, I don't really know what prompt I'm gonna count it for in the bingo board. I think this month I'm kind of just gonna read the books I wanna read and then at the end I'll see what fits the bingo board because this could count as a new to me author, a novella, um, there's one other one. Oh, I don't remember. There was one other one. But anyway, um, I'm kind of just going to read what I want and then we'll fit things where they go, I think is my plan. Maybe in the middle of the month, I'll get more competitive and I'll change my mind. But anyway, um, the meat cute in that book was a little too cheesy for me. Um, it almost felt like the author was just trying to name drop a whole bunch of authors because they meet in a romance bookstore and basically a take on the ripped bodice, whatever. And he is the one just like name dropping all of these romance books. But the rest of the book was so, so good. I could totally overlook that. Like, and as a romance reader, like it's fine. Obviously I'm glad he reads romance and I thought that was super cute, but he is such a cinnamon roll. Um, which I knew going into it, I had heard that before that he was a major cinnamon roll, but I loved this book so, so much. Um, so I just got back from the library. I picked up Bingo Love. I didn't include these in my TBR because I didn't know what graphic novel I was going to read, but Bingo Love. And I think this is also by a black author. Check please. Um, this I believe is a male, male romance, and this is a female, female romance. And I think this is also childhood to grown folks, maybe. Um, so I'm going to read this this afternoon. This is super, I think it'll be super quick. And then I will pick something else up. But anyway, so far so good. I loved my first book of the readathon and I'm excited to read more. Good morning. So last night I did end up finishing Bingo Love. This was really cute. Um, this is about these girls who are friends. I don't know how old they are. I don't know if it's like high school or middle school, but they are friends back then, but they've liked each other, but they were too scared to act on it because they thought the other person um, like didn't like girls. And so when they finally do do something about it, their grandmas are not okay with it and separate them. And so they both live their lives, get married, have families. And then years later, they're reunited. It was really cute. I gave it four stars. So the pacing felt a little bit off at certain points. Um, there were certain times that things were just like, because like obviously their, their families are having to find out about this and there's a little bit of cheating and whatever but there were times where like things were just okay and then there were times where it was like this is not okay um because like her husband was upset that he didn't know and I don't know pacing just felt a little off um this is a little bit of a spoiler for the ending so I'll put a spoiler thing up here but at the very ending it like so the the story starts with her telling this story to someone right and it seems like it's her granddaughter, but then at the very, very end, you find out that it is actually Mari, the girl that she's in love with, um, and she has Alzheimer's. And so at that point, I started bawling. My grandma has Alzheimer's, and I just started bawling. But then at the very, very last page is very notebooky. It's like they passed away together because they couldn't stand being without each other, and it just was a little too much like the notebook for me. Um... And then, like I said, the pacing was off. So I did end up giving it four stars, but overall, really cute. Then this morning, I finished Grumpy Jake by Melissa Blue. Um, this, I had Alexa read it to me as I was getting ready. This is about a teacher and the dad of one of her kindergarten students and their romance. He is, they call him Jake the Rake because he like dates everyone and he has dated multiple teachers in this school and he like drops them after like six months and so she is like not wanting to have anything to do with him at first but obviously they have a romance and it ends up really cute I loved um Jaden the kindergartner in this he was super cute and um yeah anyway I enjoyed this book a lot I think I'm also going to give this one four stars 
I don't know. It just left me wanting a little bit more, but then the epilogue, you know how epilogues do, it like wrapped up everything into this nice, perfect little bow. And I just felt like that was unnecessary. But anyway, it was, it was cute. I would definitely recommend checking it out. So, all right, I'm going to head to school now. I don't know what I'm going to read next. I think I might pick up Truth or Dare by Danielle Allen. I'm loving reading these like shorter books because I feel like I'm accomplishing a lot, but I know that that means later in the month, I'm going to be like, ah, now I have all these like full length books to read, but I really want to read Truth or Dare. So I think I might pick that one up next, but, um, yeah, anyway, I'll update you guys later. Hey y'all, so I finished Truth or Dare yesterday and really loved it. I ended up giving it five stars. Um, I loved that. Simone and Kingston kept like playing truth or dare with each other like just as their way of communicating um I mean like not always they had normal conversations too but I thought that was cute um anyway like I don't know what else to say about it because it's such a short novella I don't want to like give everything away although I mean I feel like you pretty much know everything that happens but super cute loved the friend group I wish it was a series and we could see the other friends and where they end up, even if they don't end up together, you know, like just see all the different friends and where they do end up. So anyway, I don't know why I'm out of breath, but, um, it was really good, really enjoyed it and definitely would recommend it and want to read more by her now. So I picked up Duke. I'd like to F and I am reading Adriana Herrera's novella in this. I believe she is a black author. If she's not, let me know. And I just won't count this on my bingo board, but um, I wasn't in the mood for a full historical, so I picked this up and I'm on chapter four or five of her novella and really loving it. I'm about 40 pages in and yeah, I, I really like it and I definitely want to read the other stories in here too at some point, but so far so good. Um, I also downloaded it on my Kindle so I could read it at work today. Um, I have like a 30 minute break at one point and then also my lunchtime, so Maybe I will be able to knock out some more of this today, but so far it's really good. Um, she is a, I guess I could tell you guys about it, right? She is a, she basically she runs an apothecary basically, right? But the Duke walks into her shop and says that he is looking for his half sister that he just found out about. And sh his, his sister is good friends with um, the main character, Marina. And so she's in hiding. And so he needs Marina to tell him where she is, but she's like going to go with him, take him there. So, um, anyway, yeah, it's really good so far. They're in Paris right now. Cause that is where they have decided to meet his sister because his sister didn't actually want him to know where he lives. Um, because she just found out that she's his sister too. But anyway, um, really good so far and I will update you guys later. Hey y'all. So last night I finished, um, Adriana Herrera's story in Duke I'd Like to F and I think I'm giving me like three and a half or four stars. So I did appreciate that it wasn't like the usual rules of society, um, where she is, this innocent whatever like I mean that is most historicals and I love that too but she owns her own business and she has taken lovers before and most of the story takes place in Paris so like the same rules really don't apply in Paris that apply in London so um they like fall into their romance pretty quickly but she is knowing like this is just for this night like we cannot have a relationship you are the duke and I am a business owner and um she's half black as well so she thinks that's you know a problem also but he is completely captivated by her and is like willing to marry her anything that he can do to keep her so I appreciated how much he wanted her obviously love that in my hero but even though like I said this didn't really apply to the like norms of the times because she wasn't like a proper lady or whatever I feel like because of that this maybe was a little I don't know I don't know what the word I'm looking for is but like can a duke marry someone who's not a lady like I feel like I've read another book where that was like the main issue right like he can't marry her because he needs an, an actual like lady I don't know I don't know whatever um 
but I also love that he doesn't care about her social standing and just wants her. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, and also being that this was so short, it just felt like it was mostly just the steamy novella, which don't get me wrong, love that. But I wanted a little bit more of a plot line. Um, there was, there was some plot. There was a storyline. There was some other side characters involved as well, but I just wanted more and not like more as in I needed a longer book because this is just a novella. It was just more I needed something. I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, it was good. It wasn't bad by any means, but it wasn't my favorite historical that I've read. So, um, I have some arcs I need to read, so I'm going to probably take a break from this vlog for a few days, but I'm going to start an audiobook of Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesay, so I will update you guys if I get very far in that, but anyway, that's the plan, and I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, so I am like 56, I think, percent of the way through Like Lovers Do. I actually, um, just started it last night, and I... I'm really liking it. So Nick is a doctor. She's a resident and she is about to um, move away for a fellowship. But the last three years she has lived with Ben in his basement apartment. And he is a like financial advisor, but they have kind of developed this friendship. I'm pretty sure they're like living areas the same. I don't know. They keep calling it like she has her own apartment. But, like, there's a common bathroom in his space that, like, her soaps are in. Um, and he cooks dinner for her. So, I can't really figure that out. But, anyway. So, they hang out together a lot. He cooks her dinner a lot. And um, they've become friends over the last few years. They're both attracted to each other. But his parents are doctors. And they were never, they were never around for him when he was a kid. And so, he does not want to end up with a doctor because he's super worried about his family in the future, um, like his future kids and wants both parents to be around. And so he doesn't want to marry like a doctor or someone like that who could be on call and not around. But also um, he is afraid to expand his own business because he feels like if it gets too big, then he will be too busy. Anyway, um, they are currently on vacation in Martha's vineyard. Um, he has a couple friends that are leaving to move to Kenya to do like a engineers without borders, I think is what it's called. Um, and so their friend group is getting together for like one last hangout, I guess, before their friends leave for a while. And so anyway, so someone invited Ben's ex fiance Tinley, Tinsley, Tinley, and everyone else there's going to be coupled up. And so Ben is like, well, great. We're going to be thrown together the entire time because we're going to be the only two single people there. And so one of his friends is like, well, bring someone then. So he asks Nick to be his fake girlfriend for the trip. And he's going to do a favor for her in the process. So anyway, they're on the trip right now, but they're both super attracted to each other and like kind of fighting it. But I feel like they're going to stop fighting it pretty soon because she was just talking to one of her friends and her friend was like, just go for it. Like, I don't feel like he's going to be awkward if it doesn't work out because y'all have been friends long enough. I feel like you'll be able to keep your friendship and you're about to move away. So worst case scenario, like you just move. I don't know. So we'll see what happens. But so far, it's really, really good. So. I'll update you guys later. Okay, so I just finished Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesay. I think I'm giving it four stars. I liked it a lot, but I didn't quite love it as much as I was expecting it to. So I don't know. I don't know how to describe my thoughts on this book. So they were in Martha's Vineyard or whatever, and um, she was helping him by being his girlfriend, but the attraction was there. And so, like I said, they started... Like, it started to become a real relationship, but um, he had other things in his past that he... Well, okay, so he wanted to eventually marry someone who would be completely present with their family and not have a job that takes them away from that. And so he's really torn because she know he knows that because she's a doctor, she would be on call a lot and everything like his parents were, and his parents were never around for him. 
And so he doesn't think this is going to be a long-term thing just because of that. And she is not willing to budge in her career at all. So totally get that both sides. However, I didn't love the way the book ended. I'll put a spoiler thing up here right now because I, I want to talk about it. But he ends it realizing that, I mean, they're never really super clear on it, but basically that she can like doesn't have to give up on her dreams and he can sacrifice what he wants and she would still be a good mom and they would still build a great family, right? And then she gets everything she wants and she doesn't budge on her job. And while I get that, and I get that it's wrong of him to ask her to sacrifice. I feel like if I were in her perspective and I were truly in love with someone, I would be willing to give a little bit. And I'm not saying give up my job at all. Like he literally wanted her to, when she was done with her fellowship, he wanted her to go away, take the fellowship. This is your dream. Go do it. And then once she was done with that and she was looking for a hospital to work at, he just wanted her to consider the city that they lived in as a hospital. And she was like, no, absolutely not. I'm not, that's not where I want to work and I'm not even going to consider it. And so I just feel like if I were in her position and I really did love this guy and I wanted a future with him, I would maybe be more open to compromising on things like that. Like she still was going to have her job that she wanted, her dream job, and wasn't compromising on hours or anything like that. Literally just location. I don't know. I feel like that's crazy. But anyway, I feel like I also just got real heated about that and I didn't mean to. Anyway, I did enjoy the book a lot. I liked the fake dating aspect. I feel like it was a little less, um, is angsty the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I wanted there to be a little bit more tension between the two of them, but I felt like a lot of the fake dating stuff, we focused on his ex, on Tinsley. And while I know that that was an important part of the story because that was why they were fake dating, I just wanted a little bit more of maybe Ben and Nick's um, fighting their attraction and then, you know, them giving into their attraction, whatever, instead of the focus always being on Tinsley. Anyway, so I am now going to start Intercepted by Alexa Martin on audio. Um, tonight's Monday night. We're going to watch The Bachelor here in a little bit. So I, I won't start this until the morning, but I will start the audiobook while I'm getting ready and then listen to it on my breaks at work. So um, usually I like to go back and forth between an audiobook and a physical book, but a lot of the books I want to read for this readathon. I can't find from my library on audiobook. So this one I could. So I'm going to listen to this, I think, strictly on audio because physically I'm going to start Hookshot by Kennedy Ryan. I'm so excited to finally finish this series. I did just finish the first chapter. And so Lotus works for, which Lotus is the cousin of Iris, the heroine in the first book. And we see her and Keenan, the hero in this book, kind of meet throughout the series and have an attraction for each other, but they never really have the chance to spend time together. So obviously this is their book, right? So the first chapter is Lotus at her job. She works for some kind of fashion um, company and Keenan is going to be, or they're trying to get him to be the new... Um, like face of the company. I don't know. It wasn't super clear just in the first chapter, right? But um, they invited him to a party tonight to like, you know, try to convince him or whatever. But she has just completely sworn off men. She's like, I need a break from men for a while. But now she finds out that Keenan is going to be around and she's like, oh shoot. I've always had a thing for him and it's always been a little bit different with him. Like he's never been just like a... um a guy that I can be with carefree. Like it's always seemed like there's going to be something more if and when there is ever something more. And so she's like, yeah, but I can avoid him, right? Like I can, I can handle him. I can still, you know, take a break from men. So 
obviously that's not gonna last, um, but it was a great first chapter and I'm looking forward to reading this book so, so, so much. So that is what I am up to and I will update you guys later. Good morning, y'all. So I am like 60, I think, percent of the way through Intercepted and it's really good. So she says like hashtag a lot, like she hashtags everything, which is kind of annoying, um, but like whatever. And then the beginning of the book, I was a little concerned because it starts out with her dating Chris and then he's a complete jerk. And then Gavin comes into the picture, but there's not any cheating on her part, I guess. I, I guess that's not too much of a spoiler because it happens like right away. She finds out that Chris has been cheating on her, so she breaks up with him. So it's a romance between her and Gavin, who is the new quarterback for the team. They have a little bit of history also, but I, I like Gavin a lot. I feel like he is super sweet, kind of cinnamon roll-ish. Um... He's, I just, I love how sweet he is, but also he like tries to take care of her and like fight her battles for her. And that really upset her. Like she's like, I need to do this myself because I always used to let Chris take care of this for me and I need to stand up for myself, which I totally get. Although I would totally be like, yeah, fight my battles for me, but I get where she's coming from. I totally get it. So really liking it so far. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of my friends on Goodreads didn't give it the best reviews, but so far I really like it. So um, I'm hoping to finish it today. I have not gotten very far in Hookshot at all. Um, I think I might just put all of my focus on this one, reading it physically or audio, depending on what I have time for. And then when I'm done with that, switch to Hookshot because I'm just not making progress on it because I'm focused on this and it's kind of hard to read two sports romances at the same time. So anyway, so far so good. And I'll update you guys probably once I finish it. Hey y'all. So I finished Intercepted last night and ended up giving this four stars. I actually really liked it a lot. Like I told you guys earlier, there were a lot of my friends reviews on Goodreads that weren't the greatest. Um, so I was a little nervous about it, but I ended up really liking it. Um, I've already told you guys the hashtag thing was annoying and there's a lot of drama in this book. Um, some between the players, but mostly between like their wives, but I didn't mind it. Like usually a whole lot of drama like that in a book would drive me crazy, but I didn't mind it at all. I felt like it was realistic to the story and it added to the story. And I really, really liked this book a lot. So, um, if you were looking for a football romance, I would recommend checking this out. So I have picked back up Hookshot. I am not quite halfway through. I'm like 150 pages in. I'm loving this and I knew I would. So um, Keenan has moved to New York. His, they lived in San Francisco maybe, um, but his ex-wife has moved to New York to be on like the Baller Bays show or whatever, um, which I think it's interesting that they're letting her be on that even though they're no longer together. But anyway, she's on that show and their daughter Simone wants to do some like dance class school thing in New York. And so he moves to New York um, so that he can be near his daughter. And... <clears throat> Banner is his agent, which I forgot about. Banner is the heroine in book two, Blockshot. Um, so we see a little bit of her at the beginning of the book, which was fun. But anyway, so Keenan is supposed to be the new model for watches, right? The like forearm model for this company's watches. And so when he gets there, Lotus works there because she is a, or she works for a designer and so they reconnect they like i said have seen each other previously through iris lotus's cousin because iris is married to august who i think was on the same team with keenan for a while anyway so at that party they play a game and they end up having to kiss and loved that but 
uh, Lotus has some trauma in her past that she is trying to get over. And so she's like, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Like I'm not ready for it. I'm definitely not ready for anything physical. Whereas he was like going into this only looking for a fling. Um, and he decided that before he even saw Lotus, but they decide to be friends. And so all we're getting so far is like their friendship and them getting to know each other. And, but like, there's still this crazy attraction between them. So, 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 so good. So anyway, I really, really love this book so far and I knew I would, but I will update you guys later. Good morning, you guys. So I don't really know why I'm updating because I haven't read anything else, but just a life update real quick. So um, yesterday, I took some clips. I, I think I inserted them into the vlog if they turned out okay. So I had my formal observation for teaching yesterday, which was so weird virtually, like, cause she couldn't see everything that the kids were doing. Like I had given her links and stuff so that she could see what the kids would be working on, but there wasn't like a way to add her as another teacher to the back end so she could see their work. So like, there's no proof for her that the kids like got it you know what I mean and so it was really weird so I haven't talked to her about like the results yet hopefully hopefully I did okay um I mean I I think I did but I also don't know what it looked like from an outside perspective of someone who isn't in a virtual classroom every single day but also someone who couldn't see how the kids were performing so anyway We'll see, a little bit nervous about that just because of all of those all of those factors, but hopefully that'll all be taken into account and it'll be okay. Um, and then yesterday in Texas, we got a lot of ice and we kept thinking they were gonna shut down the school early because like north of us and even a little bit, even a little bit west, I think of us, schools were closing and like closing early because of the roads. And so we kept thinking they would, kept thinking they would, but my observation was in the afternoon. And so I was like, God, I just want to get this over with. Like, I don't know. Um, so we ended up not closing, but today is Friday. They decided to go 100% virtual today, which means I get to work from home, which is so exciting. So all the in-person teachers sent their kids home yesterday with computers and any kind of extra stuff they would need while they're at home. So Friday is completely virtual. Monday is President's Day and that is, it is a work day. It's a professional development day, but that was already gonna be a work from home day. But we're supposed to get a lot of snow on Monday. And so if the roads are still bad enough, Tuesday could still be a work from home day, potentially. So I'm hoping it is because even if I'm working, like I would so much rather work from home. Um, so that could be like a five days at home, which would be amazing. So anyway, I don't know why they don't let me work from home because I'm virtual. It's like, they don't trust me to do my job. Um, I have a teammate who's virtual, but she gets to work from home because of health conditions. So I have to go and do lunch duty and recess duty. I, well, I don't do recess duty, but I have to go work from, from school just so I can do all the duties because I'm the only other available teacher, which is frustrating because those aren't even my kids. Anyway, okay, rant over. So, oh yeah, but I, I'm sure you saw yesterday, I was trying to leave school and my car was completely like iced shut. And then like y'all Northerners are probably laughing at me, whatever. But I tried to like roll my window down to get the ice to break apart. And <laughs> as I rolled the window down, there was still just like a sheet of ice. And so I was like, uh oh, roll the window back up because I didn't want it to fall in my car. But anyway, that's what my life is is today. Um, I'm going to hopefully finish Hookshot today in between all of my classes that I'm teaching or after school or something. Um, and then I think I will end the vlog there and start a part two, just because I don't know how long a month long vlog will be, you know? So I will update you guys probably once I'm done with the Good morning y'all. So I totally should have closed out this vlog last night when I finished this book while I still had makeup on. But that's okay. So I finished Hookshot yesterday afternoon and I've had a little bit of a book hangover from it, hangover from it, which happened with Longshot too. But you guys, Kennedy Ryan, man, the love that you can feel from these characters. And I don't mean even like 
the romance or the chemistry or sexual tension. And while that's all there, it's just this love story that is so powerful and so sweet. And I just absolutely love it. And when they started quoting Song of Solomon to each other, I about died. Like, it's so precious. And the way that they told each other they loved each other, like, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. I almost started crying at that point. Like, and I know that people say like the, like the words and stuff in, in the grip series are even better. So I'll get to that later. <laughs> like I haven't read that yet, but wow, this was good. I think I might still like long shot more. I'm not positive, but this is definitely a close second. Um, I've now read six Kennedy Ryan books and I would say this is definitely at least at the number two spot. It was so good. Um, Keenan is a single dad. He has a 14 year old daughter who isn't in the book a ton, but does play a big part in the book. Um, and it's just, I love how there's a little bit of an age gap too. I think Keenan and Lotus are like 11 years apart, but like none of that matters because their love is just, oh, it's just so good. I don't even know what else to say. Like, I don't even know what to tell you guys. It was just so good. You need to read this book. So sweet. Um, Lotus does do a little bit of voodoo, which I don't particularly love. <laughs> um, by the end of the book, like I just was used to it. When she was first talking about it, I not a big fan of that. Um, but I knew that was coming because she is Iris's cousin who was the heroine in book one. And so like, we kind of knew that throughout. Um, we get to see a lot of Iris and August in this book too, um, which is fun. And then Grip and Bristol even make an appearance. Like I said, I haven't read those books yet. So I feel like that would have been more fun had I read those. But Kennedy Ryan does a great job of like adding past characters back into books. Um, I think Lotus makes an appearance in the Kingmaker duet or Queen Move, one of the two. Um, I think it was actually Queen Move maybe. Anyway, so it's just fun to like re- to see some of your favorite characters in newer books also, even if it's not like a huge part, they're just, they're there. So um, anyway, loved this book so much, so, so much. Um, so it is, today's the 13th, I think, but I'm ending this vlog here. Um, I will do another vlog for the second half of the month. Um, just figured it would probably be better to split it up a little bit, but, I don't know what I'm going to read today because like I said, that book kind of put me in a book hangover and I didn't want to start anything last night. So we'll see. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have read any of these books. What did you think about them? And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.